everybody, and welcome to a self-made wild ride with Steve-O. We've got the rapper Russ. This guy is the definition of self-made. He made his first music with a microphone from Guitar Hero, the video game. I mean, just from a basement, uh, a college dorm room, to the arena tour that he's going on. And I was not prepared to be as inspired by this guy as I was. There's so many things I relate to him on, and uh, he's just genuinely a an incredible and inspiring guy. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this is one of my favorite podcasts we've recorded in a long time. Um, I think it's really, really special. So please do enjoy. Let's get into it. So many cameras. This is fucking sick. Jesus. <laughs> it's pretty cool the way we do it, it's huh? It's so tight. So Ladies cool. and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Russ. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, we're in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, this morning, we yeah. were at my ranch in Tennessee. I just uh, became a Tennessee resident. Oh, nice. Got a big-ass property. You have a bunch of animals? Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to have a lot, a lot. Yeah. But uh, at the moment, we're uh, we're just kind of baby steps. But yeah, it's so cool. Like, the, the property's big enough that I've got this RV tour bus just sitting in the driveway. And, and the boys, we just jump on, and now we're in Atlanta. Uh, it's pretty it's Tennessee's pretty cool. close. Depending yeah. on where you are in Tennessee, but Tennessee's pretty close. By car, it was a 10-hour drive. So okay, so never mind. <laughs> in, 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 in bus time. Bus, that's like 14. Yeah, that's about right, huh? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. but uh, dude, I'm just really, really stoked to talk to you, man. Like, genuinely Same, inspired man. Wow. By, by the story. And um, there's just a lot that I personally relate to. Wow. You know, like, um, of course, with you, it's music. But, like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you switch... You know, music with, you know, dumbass, <laughs> you know, like dumbass ideas. And, and there's yeah. really like, yeah, there's really a, a, a lot of a, of, a, of a parallel there. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, I, I want to just dive in on one thing. There's something that I saw, which uh, seemed to be pretty significant to you, mm -hmm. that at some point, I'm not sure what point in your career, but uh, a, a rumor came out mm. that your dad was somehow right. affiliated yeah. with like Colombian cartels. No, Is Columbia. That... No, oh my God. Oh, that's, yeah. I wish it would have been that. That's so oh. much cooler. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, Columbia, that's the so... record label. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Can you imagine? That's <laughs> fucking crazy. Because I was going to say They're like, both that... nuts, but the Colombian cartel would, like, I would have ran with that. For sure. Right. Okay. So, so they're saying so that so the the accusation was that you're an industry plant because yeah, your that dad like my dad worked at a record label. It's like wow, how convenient. He worked at the one record label that I partnered with at the exact time mm -hmm. after putting out a hundred songs and eleven mixtapes. He just popped up with a job there. So. Wow. Just idiot. Dude, how yeah. funny, dude. That, that I was like, oh, like tied to Columbia, and I was like, oh man, like wouldn't. You were probably about to go down a rabbit hole. You had a whole rabbit hole plan. Like, I can't wait to dive down this. Well, because, yeah. because yeah, then when I saw the that the, your record label was Columbia, I go, oh, I'm thinking about, isn't it funny? They thought it was Columbia. <laughs> There's Columbia. <laughs> That's fucking Damn. awesome. Do you think industry plants are a real thing? Um, but what what is an industry plant? In, industry plant. You know what's so funny is. <clears throat> And even, to even be in the industry back in the day before the internet, you had to be an industry plant. So an industry plant mm -hmm. is somebody who is planted in the public, to the public eye, by the industry. Yeah. Essentially, where it's like, because, you know, when you start seeing new artists, you're like, where'd this person come from? And you find out they've been signed for six years and, you know, yeah. like they've been really marketed the mm -hmm. whole time behind the scenes. That's kind of what they mean by industry plant. But it's like that's how you that was the only option like before right. the internet. Yeah. Um so when the internet came around, like now it gave gave ground to like the whole DIY movement and you just being in your room and putting shit out. Yeah. And so you take pride in that. Like for me, I was really like in the basement with just my friend, like putting shit out. And so when you blow up from that, you're like, This is crazy. Like, this is why this is really hard to do. So yeah. when people were just trying to 
throw like different rumors on me it's you know i take it as a compliment because it's like you literally did something unbelievable like they don't believe mm-hmm. that you could yeah. have just done that so it's like yeah whatever yeah i mean the, the whole diy approach to starting a career the man do i relate to that like, yeah with me it was uh like a, a, a vhs c video camera and and then like plugging in video cassette recorders right. like vcrs like hit play on one record on the other Shit. and and uh you know duplicate these videotapes which i would then walk to the post office and put in an envelope and mail for someone to put the cassette tape into a vcr oh, shit. like before even they had the the internet you know before email was was a, a thing but before like uh instant gratification of like views and likes like how were you seeing that you were blowing up well that's the other thing like in uh, hearing you talk about how you just believed that like every song was was like was a hit or yeah. gonna be a hit and it was just like that's what I related to the most. You were just like, man, like it's just a matter of time until people find out. Yeah. You know, that my, that my, it's like that delusional confidence. Yeah, that I'm dope. Like I, I felt that way, and and uh, you know, for me, it, it was always instant gratification because I went everywhere with a, a video tape cassette, mm. and like I would just take over a living room. I'd be like at the party, like okay, everybody, part like the whole party, all right, like everybody, come on into the living room, usher <laughs> yeah. around the TV. That checks out. And, and, and I, <laughs> yeah, and then I put in the videotape into the VCR and make everybody at parties watch me yeah. on TV. So there was this in, awesome. in, instant feedback. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude. They had uh, skateboard conventions, like action sports conventions. Yeah, and and uh, that how I got my first like real sponsor. Yeah. Like I got into one of these conventions, yeah. and I went around. The, every booth in the convention has like a TV set with the VCR, you so just they can. Like, I, I go, I, I go up to booths and straight eject their video yeah, yeah, yeah. put in my video right. tape and hit play and like dude people were so pissed like what the hell are you doing like, you know like oh dude hey man all good man sorry my bad it's like the modern version that's like going into the apple store and putting your music on all the iPhones. yeah 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 exactly <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. But, that, but that was how i found my sponsor uh that's awesome was uh the, the one guy because like at that point I was on on rooftops, like lighting myself on fire, like doing Insanity. simultaneous fire breathing flips off of three story buildings into shallow. Was pools. there ever a fear of death? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Like, like, yeah. Uh, what do you mean? That was the whole driving. Force. I was more more afraid of paralysis. Wow. But but, but absolutely. And there was this one booth where this guy, you know, there I am on fire and flying off the buildings, and this guy's like, "Hey, is that you?" It's like, "Yeah, let's talk about putting you in my next video." And oh, and, and that was like you know pretty much really where where it truly began for me simpler times man yeah so yeah. what happened with you 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 had music you put it on tune core then all of a sudden yeah i mean i was just and... yeah i put out 11 mixtapes just self-produced self and that's everything. between 2011 and 2014 yeah so 11 in that short and really it was damn near like 2012 because the first one was december 2011 so I it can't. was so much music but how many and views were you getting like year one those didn't get shit. those were like i mean Spotify wasn't a thing. Apple Music wasn't really a thing. We were gauging success off of like downloads. Like, wow, how many people downloaded this on Mediafire? You know what I mean? Wow. Straight that's up, like yeah. that's how we would upload the music. Like we yeah. would put it on iTunes, but we would never like push that link. We have like ten followers. I'm gonna ask y'all to buy my shit. Like, yeah. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, when when you were in the basement mm-hmm. and you made your first music, like the microphone that you used was a microphone from the video game Guitar Hero. Yes, yes, uh, Rock like, Band. Oh, same rock shit. Band. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Rock Dude, that that is so classic. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. just so classic that that's. Your we microphone. thought it was fucking awesome. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. we just I remember just how enamored we were with the fact that we could hear our voices and like yeah. we could make a song. Like that was that was success, you know. Dude, it's the same thing with me. Yeah. Except it's like uh, I, I had this crazy like m- like mortality complex. I think that we all do. That it's like that it's just human mm. that, that that we fear death. Like our, mm. our 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 only real instinct is to survive. Wow. Yeah. But our only guarantee is that we won't. <laughs> right. That you is know? fucked. So, yeah. so our human existence is just this like 
total catch-22 where yeah. we're just barreling towards the one thing that we're, we fear the most. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. So, so like, true. the purpose in our experience is to somehow wrap our head around that, you know? Yeah. And that's why people are so focused on, I'm going to have kids, you know, so mm. I, I, I live on. I'm going to be religious, so I believe I'm going to heaven, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm going to... And, and then there's the artist that's yeah. like, I'm going to create stuff that's gonna that outlast me. That outlasts me. Yeah. So like, so when I saw myself on the videotapes that I was making, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna be dead probably sooner than later, <laughs> but I'm not gonna be dead because I'll still be on video, dude. Right. You're immortalized. And and so how many views like was wasn't a thing? It was that I'll be. It's how long I have the potential to be viewed. Wow. This was my way to cheat death, like my, my immortality. That's fire. Wow. And, I had and, similar thoughts like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And, and I don't think it's it's uh, a coincidence mm. that that like here I am like the actual art that I was creating was effectively me lashing out at death, mm. you know, like cheating, like mocking, oh, like, like, it's like screw you, fire. death, you know, like I'm gonna hang off a twelve story building by my yeah. bare hands and like ah screw you, you death. just stare it in the face and be like fuck you, yeah, wow. kinda, you Dude, know, that's incredible. I never looked at it like. That's awesome. Well, it's uh, that's a hell of a way to live. You could certainly say that my lifestyle is adventurous. And for people who are adventurous, man, do I have something special for you. It's the Wellness Company First Aid Emergency Kit. This is not a run-of-the-mill emergency kit by any means. It comes with nine life-saving prescriptions, things that I could have really used quick access to many, many times, like the burn cream. <laughs> A lot of times I could have used that. They've got uh, antibiotics, amoxicillin, if uh, if you've got infections. I mean, it's crazy that you can just get all of this stuff preemptively by going to twc.health slash stevo and uh, take a two-minute intake quiz and you literally get these prescriptions you get everything in here that you're going to need when you run into some difficulties and medical complications on your adventures and it's so compact man it's like the dopest first aid emergency kit you could possibly get man i wish i had this so long before it stores easily in your car or in your backpack and uh, it's the way to live, man. And again, if you go to twc.health slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo to get 15% off your order and free shipping. That's right. You're going to be glad you did. You get 15% off this most comprehensive and badass first aid emergency kit that you could possibly find anywhere. Um, I can't recommend it enough, and that's why I'm recommending it to you right now. Get yourself one of these first aid emergency kits. It could save your life. And get it now at twc.health slash Stevo, and use the promo code Stevo for 15% off. You'll thank me. Now, let's get back to it. I, I, I guess, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, thought that, I thought that I was gonna die like very young and having failed and, and I, uh, I was really considered that what I was up to was just kind of trying to pack my message into the bottle. How old were you when like Jackass and all that took uh, off? Jackass came out, I was 26. Wow, young. 26 years old. And um, I made my first video when I was 15. Shit. Yeah. See, 11 years, it's crazy. Yeah. It was 1990. When wow. I made my first video, so before you were born. Yeah, a couple years. I'm 92. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's crazy. You know, yeah, how long did you grind for until you blew up? Wait, no, let me ask you this. Yeah. When, when, when you were using the rock band microphone, yeah. what year was that? That was when I was in high school, so I wasn't even on the mic yet. I was just recording people from high school, so that had to be 06, 07. Okay, so that's when you're making beats. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And your bro. Bugus yes. is like, hey, I know people who could rap on these. Right, and he just was bringing people over, and then Bugus started to rap. But we had like a little clique in high school, like a little rap group. We like made T-shirts and shit. So funny, man! Yeah. I had a little skateboard team in high school. Yeah, like the big skateboard company was called H Street, and we called ourselves H Road. I think that was the most like, <laughs> that was the most pure, um, 
it ever has been. And it's almost like a fight to get back to that purity where it's like the whole point was just to express yourself. Mm-hmm. It was just to do it. Like that was the coolest shit ever. You think it ever gets back to that point? Um, <clears throat> I think it's really, really difficult to, I think it's possible, mm-hmm. but I do think it's difficult to get back to a, to like that childlike naivety of just like, oh, doing it just to do it. Well, there's contracts involved. Where now. you're just excited yeah. about like, oh my God, I like just to even hear the song that you just made. I mean, let me let me say this. When I make something that I really, really love, I get that same feeling, that same childlike feeling. And that's when I know it's really special. Is when like I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm just excited that we like I just made a song, you know, and that's yeah, yeah it's such a pure feeling. But back then it was just like insane to even like, whoa, like the fucking, you hear the voice out the speakers? You weren't thinking about like, this sounds like shit, or like this mix is yeah. terrible, or mm-hmm. you're just like, this is just awesome that we can do it. Yeah. So you start making the beats in high school, in, yeah. the, in the basement, and, and you you did go to college. I went to college for like a uh, semester and a half. Okay, I went to college for two semesters Got me and beat. a quarter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> But, but, so you made it to like sophomore year ish. Yeah, I was a second year freshman. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I didn't know that. I showed up to the second year and and uh, it said freshman They're on my like, dorm room still door. A freshman. I was like, oh, like what, do you mean? what do you mean freshman? They're like, yeah, you didn't get the credits. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What so, college did you go to? University of Miami. Oh, that's yeah. like a good school. It, no? it, it, it was a very good school. Yeah. How did you get in? Uh, because I applied for I applied for. Early I wasn't trying acceptance. to be like you're. How would you get it? Really? <laughs> yeah, it was early acceptance. I applied for. Had I not applied for early acceptance, like the free fall that my grades were in, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, because I feel like didn't you go to jail on the night of your high school graduation? I did. <laughs> <laughs> the night before, I got out of a jail cell at like five in the morning, and I was like getting my diploma at like eleven in the morning. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and what a roller coaster! Yeah. And, I, and and when I graduated from high school, I went to like a really really privileged high school in London, England, the American school oh. in London. Were you born in London? I was born in England. I grew up in five different countries. It's another thing Holy we have in common shit. is that we both grew up moving a lot. Yeah. Um, and eighty percent of my senior graduating class went on to Ivy League schools. Oh, fuck. so comparatively, I was kind of a loser for going to the University of Miami, wow. even though like it's a good school. Yeah. But yeah, I failed real bad. Mm. Now, when you were in college, then now you're in the dorm room. Making- yeah, yeah. So I was in the yeah, I was just in the dorm. And what college was it? Valdosta State. And, it's like deep South Georgia. Hmm. Nice. Like right on the border of Florida, damn near. So. And you're a resident of Georgia at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. it's like four hours from here. Um, and yeah, I was just making music in the dorm room. I still hadn't made songs yet. I was just making beats. Bugus was at Morehouse um, up in Atlanta. And I was doing really well in school. Like at midterms, I had straight A's. And I was just like, well, this is just wow. so fucking easy. Um, <laughs> and I, so I stopped going. <laughs> so oh, I was, yeah. Because okay. I was like, this is so easy. I could probably just coast. Right. And then, like, to be honest, Kanye dropped Twisted Fantasy my first semester of college. That was 2007? Uh, no, 2010. Oh, okay. And I got fucking, like, the, the bug just officially bit me where I was like, nah, I got to make something that gives me the feeling that I have right now while listening to this. And so then I just stopped going to classes. I sold all my textbooks finals week and bought a shit ton of weed and just sat in the dorm room and smoked weed and nice. made music and my parents were like what the fuck did you just do wow. and that was that um hmm. the, when, when you're in the dorm rooms like uh what like what, what, did you have like tricks for smoking weed in the dorm room just like, open the window open the window yeah i had like that one window you just and i had a bong everything was a bong Right, I remember. So I remember bad. like uh, when when my little stay at the University of Miami. There was like a toilet paper roll, like the cardboard uh, roll, and then and you, you put the bounce oh, sheets. Yeah, in. the bounce sheets spoof, in it. Right? Yeah, Isn't the, that yeah, the, 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 and you blow the, the smoke. Baggie, there. It just yeah. sort of comes out, kind yeah. of smell, and and you get the towel, the wet towel under the door to keep it. <laughs> College running. kids are resourceful. And the fan, yeah. the, the 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 box fan in the window to send it out, but. Uh, none of that ever really. And worked. you had like the traditional dorm room, just like the two bunks. 
Or like, what you? What was your dorm like? My dorm was just that eight by eleven, like. Yeah, it looked jail like a jail cell. cell. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It looked like a jail cell. And but just I got a community shower. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking. I got kicked shit. out anyway, dude. Within two weeks of class starting my freshman year, I was uh, kicked out of my dorm and relocated to another one, and I was on final disciplinary probation. Two weeks in? Within two weeks of class Final disciplinary? <laughs> <laughs> they just skipped all the I, other steps. <laughs> like, yeah, you're on your yeah. last strike. Like, yeah. That was my first strike. I, I got, I got caught, caught with enough stuff that, uh, that I, I burned up my, my strikes. <laughs> but yeah, dude. So when when you had the uh, when you quit everything, you you brought all the weed back to your dorm. You started just making yeah. music. Did anything come out of that? All the music that you made from that like one session? No, it was more so. All that shit was so terrible. It was more so like that was just the point where I decided that that's really what I wanted. Yeah, to committed. Do. Yeah, that's when you committed. Yeah, the exactly. And then I came back home and I went to school around here. I went to uh, Kennesaw State up until like spring break. And um, we went to California on spring break. It was my first time in California. Boogus is from L.A. And we were going out there to shoot a video for him. Like, he was shooting a music video for a song that I produced. And um, we shoot it. We come back. And then we're spamming Rob Markman, this guy that worked at MTV at the time. We're spamming him on Twitter with the video. And uh, talking shit to him. Like, talking shit about 2K, like, video game. Just trying to get attention. And um, he ends up seeing the link and like watches the video and um he puts us on mtv with on this segment they used to have called get in the game where they'd have like an established artist like watch an up-and-coming artist video and like you got to talk to them Sick. and so yeah we went to la shoot this music video i've never been to la we shoot a video it gets on mtv i'm like I never went to class since. That was that. <laughs> really? I, was like, Dude, yeah, I, I relate that was to it. that so much too. That's that's like the way that I was just spamming uh, Jeff Tremaine, who went on to become the director of Jackass. Like, wow! It started See? out as a skateboarding magazine oh, that just shit. had all this crazy stuff in it. They yeah. made these crazy videos, and then they came up with the idea like, "Hey, why don't we take out the skateboarding and all just the crazy stuff? We could pitch that as a TV so show." So smart. Well, and, uh, what do you, <laughs> smart. So, sorry, I was sorry. blowing up Tremaine's phone all the time. I was so annoying, but I was so persistent that like it kind of got me. That's in. literally how I got. All my first looks was just <laughs> being obnoxious on seriously, yeah, like, yeah. like blog writers, because this is in the blog era, like back in 2010, uh -huh. when you know Two Dope Boys and DJ Booth and all this shit. And I used to just spam, like every day I would send hundreds of emails, and uh, to the point where like I remember Shake at Two Dope Boys, he posted a screenshot of his inbox on Twitter, and he was like, <laughs> "Look at this fucking spammer." And I'm like, oh, so you got time to fucking post a screenshot, but you can't check the music out. <laughs> and so, like, we went back and forth, but he ended up posting the music. So, like, that's how I got all, like, my first looks was just being fucking obnoxious. So, I mean, yeah. you kind of have to, man. You it's have the, to. The, the, the squeaky wheel gets squeaky the wheel grease, gets the oil. Yeah. You, you think that's still, like, that's still a good way to go about it nowadays? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a tale as old as time. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, when I when I got, like, product in the marketplace, it wasn't until, like, the 3,000th email mm -hmm. of them, like, saying, no, we're not interested. Shoot okay, or shoot. Okay, cool. Hey, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to email you tomorrow, and I'm going to do it again. That's and what I'm, you'd literally say. I'm, I'm so gonna, sorry. But... I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I have to. Oh, I would be obnoxious, bro. Like, like, my subject line would be, like, this is the future. Yeah. You're a fucking idiot if you don't open sure. it. It's like, yeah. it would be nuts. Yeah. I, mean, crazy. I mean, finally, like, they just cave, and, like, Fine. Yeah. You're in. I'm kind of ashamed to admit this, but I think it was for way more than three years that my cats were begging me to stop feeding them crappy kibble and start giving them actual food that is delicious, that they love, that their bodies recognize as actual food. I might have been late to do it, but thank God I got around to it. I found Smalls. Smalls is real food for cats, nutrient dense, super packed, and they've got the most generous offer that the Wild Ride listeners have ever received. If you go to smalls.com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo, you will get a full 50% off your first order plus free shipping. And again, this is actual food. It's uh, super healthy. It's 
it's frozen when you get it and then you keep it in the fridge. The way my cats gobble this stuff up and how happy they are, it speaks for itself. So praise be to Smalls and praise be to the offer they're giving you if you go to smalls.com slash stevo and use the promo code stevo again 50 percent off your first order plus free shipping that's amazing do it for your cats and let's get back to it like <laughs> after three or four years of like yeah daily yeah, yeah. email i was gonna do a book on the amount of fucking emails i sent to buyers <laughs> like it's awesome Ten thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at that point, it's like you've got nothing to lose. So right. there's yeah. nothing to be like. Uh, Worst case scenario, about. they ignore you, which, right. you're which they've been doing ignored. for yeah. three years anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, business, yeah. so it's not personal. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Exactly. it's their fault if they get annoyed. Yeah. Um. But now that so you, you stop going to class and never went to class again. Mm -hmm. I remember like when I like when I left college, like I, yeah. I was I was failing because. I was wasn't going to class, mm. you know, and and I got kicked out of the dorms, and I upped and dropped out. Mm -hmm. And University of Miami wasn't like a cheap school, you know. Yeah. Like I was like <laughs> I was just torching like a bunch of my parents' money yeah. that they had invested in me going to college, and like I, I was I had a lot of shame around that, mm. you know. Um, what, when when you <laughs> stop going to class. Like I guess because you're going to school within the state, if there mm -hmm. wasn't as much money, like no, it wasn't as bad. But my um, my mom made me sign a contract, yeah. saying that like if I'm not self sufficient off of my music by a certain date, then I had to go back to school. She was really upset that I. How long did going. she give you? Um, I still have that letter. It's up in my uh, it's in my room. I think it was only a year, year or two, something yeah. like that. I gotta go look at it. Yeah. But what, why were you living at home? Yeah, I was living at home. Yeah, so they were just like, you're not mm -hmm. about to sit here and just like smoke weed all day. And but I wasn't. I was really, really on it. Like every day, I was either making beats in my room or I was at Boogus's and we were making songs. But it's hard if your parents like you don't really see what I'm doing when I'm at Boogus's. For all you know, I'm just over at Boogus's smoking weed, mm -hmm. not doing jack shit. Yeah, you know. Well, and to be fair, as a parent, like. Even if you've got all the hustle in the world, yeah, the parents thinking like, okay, what are the odds? This is this, you know, yeah, like, right. yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. making the NBA. Like right, you, could, you and I defied bigger odds than that. Yeah, kind of or, or in that mm. realm. Yeah, for sure. Know? Um, that's we, why the MTV thing was so big for me, because I was able to show my parents that there was like sign of life on this faraway planet i was trying yeah. to get to mm -hmm. it was like nah look like it can happen <clears throat> we just got on mtv yeah and that was a huge thing back then like yeah yeah so, so the contract with your mom was uh an indirect response to you leaving dropping college. out yeah um okay and uh what was it that you were in college for <laughs> To drop out. <laughs> I, I know, but, but like, what was your major? Like, like, I didn't. I don't even think I got to that point. I was just. I was just, just basic taking studies. the core classes. Yeah. yeah, they knew something was up though when I started failing like music class, like music theory. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're like, "You're not going to music class." I'm like, <laughs> "Nope." <Yeah. laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it was one of those things where it just took me a second to, I guess, really jump off the cliff, you know, and yeah. take that leap of faith. Because it's scary at first. Like, you just, you're still with all your peers and friends, and they're all doing this path. Right. And so you feel like nuts if you go this right. way. Right. You know, but. I mean, dude, for me, like, when I left University of Miami, I'm like, dude, like, like every, every, what are you going to do now? You know, like, right. what are you going to do? Where are you even going to live? Like, you got no home. Like, I'm right. like, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to videotape. Like dumb shit with a home I video mean, camera. I mean, so nuts. Was, <laughs> like, I feel like your shit is way more insane than mine. Dude, like, it was 1993. That's the wild. internet came out in '96. Email was not a word until 1996. I mean, and in 1993, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna become a crazy famous stuntman with a home video camera. That's and people epic. just people just felt sorry for me you know like and i was legitimately homeless for three years wow. but you didn't think to go to like la and join the stuntman union no because dude i couldn't stay out of jail and then <laughs> and then like and and, and, and when, when i got out of jail then i had probation which came with the stuff that you have to pay and mm. i couldn't afford to pay it so that was like part of the reason why i moved to new mexico 
to live with my sister was because I couldn't pay my probation. I'm like, it's only misdemeanor. So when I get to New Mexico, I'm out of the state and my my like criminal like situation won't follow me because misdemeanors don't cross state lines. Uh, do you so have I, shit pending in states? And, 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 and I'm Are like, you wanted? Yeah. Well, dude, and, and I'm like, and I'm like, everywhere I go, I just get in trouble with the law, and I get sucked into the the. I don't want to go. I wanted to go to California, but I was like, I don't want to go to California and get sucked into their criminal system mm. and I can't, and I'm in quicksand. Like, I gotta, I gotta get kind of stable. I gotta go to California when California, like, is ready for me, when, when I'm invited. You know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I waited. When California is ready for me, well, you know, when like when, when I'm when I'm gonna be there, when when I'm gonna be okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, I just yeah. like I, I don't want to burn the burn the California ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and so that was like uh, I was it was my it was, my life was an agonizing wait to get to California, <laughs> yeah. and but to, to do it properly for sure. Um, the uh, and, and the delusion of like. The delusion of success is something that I really, really yeah. uh, love when you, when you talk about that. It's like, I'm rad. It's just the, the world just hasn't found out yet. Right. You know? But, and, and now, like, but you can't have that, like, confidence through and through all the time. There's always a, but, you know. Eh. Yeah. You know what? I think for me, I was so, um, there was a part of me that was desperately trying to prove something to myself. So like if doubt ever did seep in, I didn't recognize it. Cause I instantly shut it down. Like, fuck you. You right. know what I mean? And I just <laughs> like, and I would just overcompensate and gas myself up even more, you know, because for a while, as you know, you're the only person who believes in what you're doing. Right. So mm -hmm. you have to be nuts. Like you have to yeah. turn yourself into like a self-belief monster, you know? Yeah. What were some of the ways that you used to pump yourself up? Um, really, to be honest, the best way uh, for me was uh, reading certain self-help books and being around sure. Boogus because we created this mastermind um, and this environment that it was just me and him in this bubble and he was equally as delusional as I was, you know? So even though I say like I had to turn myself into a self-belief monster, it was it was nice to have someone else in the fire with me. Yeah. Because if I ever did feel like eh, whatever, and I really genuinely don't remember ever feeling like, oh, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. But if I did, I was around Boogus all the time and he didn't feel like that. So, you know, we kind of just picked up where each other were maybe slacking. Yeah, that's so that's so funny. It's like <clears throat> at any moment that, that you slip into doubt, like – you guys don't slip into doubt at the same time. So the other right, guy's exactly. like, yeah, yeah, smack, smack, smack. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I just, I really bought into Napoleon Hill self-help shit and Deepak Chopra and all that where it's like, I don't have doubt. Like, you can't have doubt. Uh, like, right. and almost tried to like reject it as if it's not a real thing and, you know, all this like macho shit, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> for what it, it worked for as long as it could work for. We're, we're we're big into to that stuff too yeah. like he's all, all on the bi autobiography of a yogi <laughs> yeah. Paramahansa Napoleon yogi Hill, like his, his tapes from the 50s and 60s in Chicago I've listened to 20,000 oh, hours fuck yeah man and we're I both went down the rabbit hole psychic. yeah him. he's awesome yeah. he's awesome <laughs> have you ever uh, heard of the book <clears throat> Conversations with God no who's that by it's uh neil donald walsh wow it's got a, it's like started out as a trilogy it's uh that's a big one for me like i base yeah. my entire uh belief system on conversations wow. with god that's like for me that like that's what the universe is yeah and uh i mean it's it's, it's a big deal man um with uh okay so, so now you, you've got the contract with your mom mm -hmm. you're living at her house mm -hmm. and um, at, at this point, it's it's 2010. Yeah, 20, 2011. 2011. So now we're getting into the bit where, where you're, you're making the mixtapes. Yeah, so now, like, you know, Boogus was the artist. I was the producer. So I was just making beats for him. But um, every once in a while, I would do, like, hooks, you know, like choruses. And I would just, like, sing a little something on his songs. And I remember just one time in the basement, it's like a pivotal moment where I was on the mic because I was like about to do a hook and I turn around and I'm like, yo, should I start rapping? And he was like, hell yeah. And that was all I needed, you know? Cause like, if I wanted, if I believed in it and if Boogus believed in it, that was enough for me. And um, that was, 
probably October or November of um, 2011. And December of 2011, I put out my first mixtape of eight songs, and that was that. It was like I was on fucking go at that point. Was there any, um, like, attempts or, or like, effort, like, reaching out to artists about licensing beats out? Oh, no. I, well, when I was in high school, I was trying to sell beats, but, like, very unsuccessful at that. If I'm honest, when I was in high school, I tried to be kind of stylish, and I wasn't very successful. But look at me now. I got outer known which isn't just super stylish. It's clothing made from organic and recycled materials using fair trade factories around the world. And why is that important? Because the way that so many brands and companies exploit human labor is really upsetting. Plus the destruction to the environment. Like it's not stylish to wear clothes that destroy the world. And that's why I'm so jazzed on Outer Known. It's a company that was started by Kelly Slater, the goat of surfing. And everything that it stands for is everything that I'm into. And all of my friends and listeners get a full 25% off their order at Outer Known if you go to outerknown.com slash stevo and use the promo code STEVO. Again, a full 25% off your whole order if you go to outerknown.com slash STEVO. That's O-U-T-E-R-K-N-O-W-N dot com slash STEVO and use the promo code STEVO. So, I mean, what are you waiting for? Be stylish and help save the world with the GOAT, Kelly Slater. I love you, Kelly. And I love Outer Known. Now, let's get back to it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I think I sold one beat ever for like $200 in high school. And I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. Like, what to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, just being a, like a producer for big established artists? No, that wasn't even, that just seems so far out of reach. You know, uh-huh. I didn't know anyone. I didn't even know how to get in contact with like, I would spam people on Twitter. I would spam artists on Twitter like, yo, I have beats for you. Let me make beats for you and just like get no response. So it's yeah. like, all right. Mm-hmm. That was, that's kind of what drove that whole like DIY mentality, which is why when that rumor of like industry plan, whatever, was so obnoxious. Cause I'm like, bro, like I'm the furthest thing from it. I was like, scroll down my Twitter fucking 14 <laughs> years. I'm insane. <laughs> like, yeah. mm-hmm. What was your dad's job? He worked in advertising, so he worked at um, uh, a company called Van Winkle in Atlanta, and so uh-huh. they would do advertising for like Texas Pete and fucking Texas Pete gr- hot sauce. Yeah, and like great clips. So that's why, like, when people were like, "Oh, his dad does advertising for Columbia Records," it's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. well, not at all. But like, okay, did your dad? <laughs> if that was the case, why did I need to put out eleven mixtapes and a hundred something songs? <laughs> And spam people on Twitter. Like, what? It doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. Um, and and your, your mom had to sign this contract, but your dad was like, yeah, go for it, kid. Yeah, my dad was, he was amped on it. Yeah, he was amped. Yeah, dude. That, 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 that's epic. Yeah. Um, is your dad still working advertising now? No, he's retired. Yeah, because we're, we're trying to advertise hot sauce. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'll call him after this. Like Texas Texas I, how do you know about, about the because, Texas Because, dude, I'm a, I'm a hot sauce dude. I was just watching Texas a video of you fart. pour hot sauce in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so back, back to like the, the self-help books. Thing. I mean, really, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about spirituality. Right. Like, yeah. uh, and and you, you talk about, like, you call it the source. Mm. With, right? Like, you say that that's like an interchangeable with god and the universe sure i agree in my view i think it's pretty silly that like the word god is pretty silly because we're talking about the universe right Right. like is there any view of it that isn't just gods of the universe right and it's so much less polarizing to say the universe you know Mm -hmm. and i think early on for me i was so religion had been like um sort of tried to like be not forced on me because my parents didn't force it on me but think growing up i grew up catholic and Same. like you know going to sunday school and mm-hmm. ccd and like mm-hmm. all that it's like it just feels like it's being forced on you a little bit so 
that's why I got so into like, you know, Deepak Chopra and Napoleon Hill and, and these people who refer to this as the universe. It was easier for me to buy into that at that age, because if I heard like God at that age, I was like, oh, they're about to try to force religion on me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so for what it's worth, the the conversations with God thing that the, um, the, like it's this dialogue where like yeah. the, the the guy's like intuitively writing the responses that he gets from God. So Fire. it's you reading the whole dialogue. Yeah. And he, the, when the, it comes up in the dialogue about about organized religion and the idea of hell, the way that that it's it's written in this book, God says like, "Why would I punish you for making a choice?" that I set before for you to make. Mm. Why, would I, why would I create a being to be in a situation to make a choice and then punish you for making a choice that I... Right, you know, choice like, that he gave, yeah. Like, why, like, why, like what, it makes no sense. There's just so much, like, it's so freeing. Yeah, of, uh, of, see, now I'm very open to exploring all of that, you know? Because yeah. I'm not so, like closed-minded where it's like nah what organized religion god mm -hmm. like nah i'm out you know yeah well i feel like especially too because you just went on a world tour like the more you travel yeah like uh what's the saying that says the the more i travel the the further away i get from religion and the closer to god i get wow so like that's incredible. i mean i've seen your thing on in saudi arabia yeah and you know south africa i mean like wh what are those experiences like i mean it's kind of like pretty serendipitous right yeah it's uh it's incredible i kind of treat international shows like um vacation with a side of shows instead sure. of like doing shows with a side of vacation because mm -hmm. when i'm when else am i going to go out there you know i'm not going to fly all the way to saudi arabia come back home and be like all right let's go travel now it's like what was saudi yeah. arabia like i've been really dying to go incredible. there. incredible so i've been there three or four times it's amazing we were just in alula this past time which is like I think they only opened it to the public like that part of Saudi like four years ago mm -hmm. or something. So I don't know, it just feels like you're on Mars. Like you're just out in the desert and it's fucking insane. And so much money out there. Oh man. And how many people are you playing in front of in, in Saudi Arabia? So it depends. My first show out there, which was in Riyadh, was 20,000 wow. people. Whoa. That's 20,000 in Riyadh? Incredible. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. What yeah. year was that? God, when was that? 20. 18, 19, 20, wow. 20 Are there like rules that. to like things you can and cannot say in, in Saudi Arabia when you're doing shows like that? Um, surprisingly, it wasn't that strict. I've done a show. I was the first ever rap show in Kuwait. Wow. And, um, Holy shit. That, that was strict. Wait, like, to the troops or to the city of no, Kuwait? No, to like the city of Damn, Kuwait. Dude. So they were not allowed to stand. So everyone had to be seated. Um, I wasn't allowed to curse. I wasn't allowed to dance. Not that I dance, but I don't even know what that meant for me. But I mean, that sounds like a pretty blurry line between I know, I'm dancing like, and performing. Like, right. I'm like, can I move? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was wild. But Saudi was Saudi's fine. Man, that's crazy. And it, that's unbelievable. Do the Middle East pay more than a gig in Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. Saudi yeah. Arabia throws yeah. money There's around. Most money, 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 money I've ever gotten for a show is Saudi. Really? Yeah. And they're picking you up at the airport in Lambos and fucking. Nah, but I probably could have requested that. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow, yeah. dude. That's yeah. cool. Um. Okay. Okay. So. So now, like, we're we're, we're through, like the like the mixtapes. You got like mm -hmm. the 2011 to 2014. You got 11 mixtapes, yeah. and then you're like, okay, this isn't working. So right. now I'm gonna put a put a song out every week. Right. That started in 2014. That started 20. Yeah, like end of 2014. Yeah. Dude, I love the reason why you did that because <laughs> yeah. like because you you said like okay. People are. I'm looking at people's SoundCloud, mm -hmm. and like the the first song on the on the yeah. each like whatever album that they they put right. up, the first song gets all the the views, and then it just goes down and down. The retention falls. And off. it still works like that. Like if you go look at people's albums, it still works like that. That's so epic. You're like, well, the first track gets all the views, and then everything else gets less. Yeah. So everything I put up is just gonna be one track. Right. So that's I'm just going to put out a, one song album. Yeah, one, one, <laughs> yeah. one song. And yeah. they, that's so genius. Yeah, thank you. It definitely was like, it was just being a psychopath with analyzing the mm -hmm. analytics of everything. But mm -hmm. and even now, it's like, you go look at somebody's album, 
unless there's like a really big feature or they put right. it out as a single, it's that same sort of like trajectory. It just goes down because everyone, everyone will listen to one song, but like that second song is tough I, to get them to listen yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, you know? same thing with the YouTube video. Yeah. Look at the retention graph on the YouTube video. It goes down. Right. You know, as like the video people, goes on. Yeah. That's why I always like uh, make special messages. I talk to the the audience at the end, the, mm. the people who stuck around to the end. You know, that's like fire. they're the special people. Yeah. I call them the street team. <laughs> that's uh, fire. The uh, okay. So and and to what Vinny said about is it a bad is it a like a. a bad idea like to to spam like important people like you know like you're kind of making a bad relation a, a, a bad reputation for yourself mm -hmm. if like if you're just blowing up like really important influential people and we said you got nothing to lose right but the song every week approach for what you did three years 150 yeah, songs it was like two two and a half something uh, okay like that. yeah it was but a while like, like over a hundred yeah weeks yeah. a song every week yeah that is now you now you're just spamming the the world. Now, yeah. you're, now you're spamming right. the world, and not with like annoying, like like obnoxious. Hey, look at me, look at me. But you're yeah. giving them art. Yeah, you're giving them art, and then like out of those, you got like a, like, like two tracks make it to the Billboard. Chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then that gets the attention right of the of, labels of and the, everything of the label. Yeah, so I was doing song a week. And the mentality was like, I'm just gonna flood the internet. Yeah, you know, that spaghetti, was spaghetti, dude. Yeah, something's like, gonna stick. Something's gonna stick. Like someone will sniff this out. And I was putting up just like videos of myself, like lip syncing to my songs of like the R&B shit. Like, let me just take advantage of this hair and try to get some female. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah. I started um, started doing that, and by like week 55, I would say. Um, there was like 10,000 SoundCloud followers I had amassed at that point. And so this is like November of 2015. And I put out a couple months back, I had put out a song called what they want that did really well. Then in November I put out losing control in those two, like went ballistic. Those were the billboard ones. Those were the big ones. Yeah. So those took off really, they took off like top of 2016 and that's when all the labels started calling and shit started blowing up. And it was the music videos that blew him up. We shot like these, you know, shout out to Edgar Estevez who DM me. I'll never forget the DM. He was like, yo, let's shoot everything. And yeah. he was a director. And at this time I have 7,000 followers on Instagram. He's got 40. His shit looks hella professional. I'm like, whoa, like wow. this is a fucking blessing. This dude just fell out the sky. And um, we shot him for free. He shot him for free and they blew up. How many music videos do you have that have over 400 million views probably on, fucking on two, YouTube. Two. 400 million? <laughs> Just those two, probably. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... That's crazy they have 400 million. 400, Jesus dude, I'm, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, they went ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> but see, like, even that, like, that was a different time. Like, YouTube was fucking cranking. Yeah. As far as music videos. Music videos now, for artists, they're just kind of dead, you know? It's like you can juice them and gas the streams and do all this fake fraudulent shit for music videos, but like it's all short form content now, you know. Yeah. So, um, get in while the game was good. <laughs> yeah. So, so those two bangers, mm -hmm. four hundred million view bangers, are what get gets the the attention of Colombia. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, then you get signed to Colombia. Yeah. So I had a European tour book that was the first tour i ever went and that on. was the, the the what they want tour the manifest tour the what oh. they want tour was right after that it was the first like american tour and so at that point like labels were flying to the shows you know which i was just feeling myself i was like fucking totally yeah I, you know i, what I bet mean? what was the deciding factor of choosing columbia then they didn't have a lot of rappers over there like this is back when all columbia had was like as far as like major acts it was beyonce adele Pharrell and like Tyler the creator and those are like the heaviest hitters of them all yeah so I was just you know a lot of the other labels they had so many other rappers and I was like I just feel like I'm not gonna get prioritized yeah over um, there what came first reps or, or the label because you got a sweet ass deal with Columbia yeah, where you got to keep your publishing right keep right. the pub and the master everything um, I mean that's in the like the catch-22 of music is that you can only make money if you own your publishing 
but you can and only the master, but, yeah. Yeah. But you can only like blow up if you have a label. And you know, so it's like Yeah, well and that was the thing. It's like I was you know, I was making a hundred grand a month before the label. So that's why I was able to kind of like mm -hmm. have leverage and negotiate a crazy deal. Cause I was like, I really don't need y'all, but I want to go with y'all. Cause at that time I'm looking around at the landscape of rap and I'm like, well, everyone's on the radio and yeah. everyone that's on the radio is signed. So I'm like, fuck, I guess I got to sign to get on the radio. That was the whole MO of yeah. signing was like, I just want to be on the radio. Yeah, I mean, it, back in the day, if we were to call it like the the establishment, you mm -hmm. know, like the the traditional music model, how many artists actually owned their own music? Master None. P and Cash yeah. Money, right? Right? Like right. that's that's it. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, and it's like it was, you know, it was such a unique deal because I had this massive back catalog on TuneCore that was over 150 songs that I told them was off limits. Like, so while being signed to Columbia, every Friday, I'm still getting a hundred grand from my tune core. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I didn't really like, and my music on Columbia was crushing. So like I was recouping and getting crazy money over there while also getting crazy money independently. It was like, just like never seen before. Cause mm -hmm. no one ever walked into a major label with a back catalog like that, that was generating that much revenue. So wow. it was a great situation. You know, I don't have any complaints about it. It was just, it was just such a different time. I mean, even saying it out loud, it's like, oh, I wanted to get on radio. So I signed. That's such a like 2016 <laughs> mentality. Ah. You know what I mean? Because that that's not a real thing right now. Yeah. You know? I mean, dude, that, that, that's insane. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, where are artists trying to get on now? Because do they give a fuck about the radio anymore? I mean, radio still helps, but no one would... E I mean, you should not sign if that is the only thing like you want. Like, that's not a good reason to sign. So, um, I don't mean... You're trying to get on playlists now. Like, like what, like Tesla? Like Rap Disney? Caviar on Spotify. Like, that's what artists want to get on. It's uh. like today's top hits. Because you got to think, like, Spotify is the new radio. Apple Music is the new radio. Mm -hmm. And the playlists on there are the new stations. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it's like you want to get on rap caviar because that's fucking that's how much do people get paid like per listen on like rap caviar or does it work like that no it's not per listen on rap caviar the idea is that if your song goes into rap caviar like a today's top hits your streams are just gonna go up because they have so many followers of that playlist yeah. it's like oh fuck who's that and they go find you right and then it, exactly is so. it is it true if you have a like a, a a trending song on tiktok yeah every time it gets reshared is that a count towards your streaming no no, not on TikTok itself. Um, although I know TikTok just, I could be wrong about, but it hasn't been. It if hasn't it is, been. it's brand new. Yeah. But your streams just like TikTok is just so um, vital in moving the needle. Yeah. Like there's no other platform that if it goes big on here, then the streams also match. So mm -hmm. if you get a big song on TikTok, the streams correlate, you know, mm -hmm. it translates over. So, but to your question, it's really like $4,000 per million streams. Okay, it's, it's kind of like a YouTube video. It's like basically what it breaks down. I mean, that's actually a big CPM for YouTube. That would be like family yeah, friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, like yeah. if you're not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so what year did you register your account on TuneCore? 2011. So that, that, that predates the, the song a week. Yo, yeah. So yeah. you got more than 150 songs. Yeah, there's a shit. I mean, now there's so many on there. There's probably... 300, Dude. 350, something like that. Would you, would you ever sell your back catalog? No, I got offered. No. I just wouldn't be able to like sleep with myself, to be honest. Really? Can you say how much you got offered? Yeah, I've said it publicly. They offered 50. 50. Yeah. 50 what? A million. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you know what? It's like I also, I'm so fortunate to be able to have like constant cash flow where I've been able to wrap my head around $50 million. Because mm -hmm. like <sighs> I've like $50 million has, ex <laughs> I've exchanged hands with $50 million. Yeah. So it's like if if I was 19 and I got offered that, I probably would do it. Yeah. I hope not. But like now I have the like perspective to be like, what do I need 50 million for? And I start running down the list. I'm like, I have my house. My mom has her house. My brother, I bought all the big purchases as my business manager says, like all the big purchases are out the way. So 50 million for what? So I can look at it and just feel better about my, like, no. Cause as soon as that wears off, I'm going to be like, I can't believe I don't own 
losing control and what they want. Yeah. It's like that would be fucking insane. But what, wow. what do you want now that you see? I just to want progress. Everything? I just want progress across the board. I just want to like be in better shape physically, yeah. mentally. I just want to make a song that I like more than the one I made last night. Like I just want progress. That's Relationships it. too. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's the, that's that's the most important thing. I yeah, because uh, I agree. Uh, are, are you in a relationship? Yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's been a big um, a big part of a big catalyst for the growth for me yeah because i think when you're when you're single it's easy to just be like i don't have to change well right like, i don't have to grow because if some if you're annoyed with someone or like it's you can just be like get out like leave me alone whatever but when you have a girl and you like care about you know yeah. this relationship it's like fuck like maybe i do need to improve upon yeah. this <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah, so I it's love awesome that. yeah hmm. I, I i love that and i think that when you're single uh, so much time gets just wasted. Oh my like, gosh, it's, it's the worst, like bro. with the the, the swiping and the communicating and just the like. It's the worst. And then on top of that, you you when you're single, like just kind of burning through chicks. Where like you, you spend enough time with them that that they really are. Yeah, uh, you know, they fall for you, mm. and then you're over it. And then and then now <laughs> what have you done? You know, like yeah. in, in a spiritual sense, like that's like a terrible way to treat somebody it really is you, know? you should um yeah i always tell everyone like now i'm like get a girl asap yeah like because go it just, ghosting yeah it just like it also focuses your energy like yeah. it helps you grow in discipline it gives you more depth as a human for sure. it's just better across the board mm -hmm. you know for sure man yeah that, that, that's epic how long have you been in the relationship a couple years nice man yeah. Mm. Yeah. you still blazing no i haven't smoked since 2021 Really? Wow. Yeah. So, so when you become like, when you become a millionaire, like, what size sacks are you buying? Like, are you uh, going out and buying man. ounces? <laughs> or are you buying fucking peas? You know, because like, I mean, there was a time where yeah, it was just like we when were you're just up and getting. You're like buying an eighth. And yeah. Then you're like got the fucking hundred thousand a month. Well, I would in. get a lot because like if I had people, I would have friends come over, and they smoked a lot, and so I just always wanted to have weed for everyone so like I, yeah i mean quarter pounds and pounds and what uh Hell such yeah. a ridiculous life <laughs> <laughs> sorry to ask but uh, that was just, just like peak curious. like rock star fate like so many tequila bottles yeah. and fucking what, was yeah. it just weed did you ever get into like gnarlier stuff when i was uh like younger the only shit i got into was i did acid for like a week straight <laughs> with pugas um Molly hit the scene crazy in Atlanta. I did that a couple times. And uh, shrooms. Okay. That was it. Acid, Molly, and shrooms. But I haven't done either. I haven't done any of those since, like, I was 20. I'm what, 31 what, now. What about alcohol? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I thought that was a given. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You still drink now? Yeah, I still drink from time to time. But it used to be, like, you know, four times a week. Right. Because anytime I would go into the studio, I would drink. And because that was, you know... When me and Bugus were coming up, that was just the environment. We would smoke, we would drink. And so before you know it, it's sort of just like a habit of like, all right, well, when you're in the studio, you're smoking and you're drinking. It's just fun. It's not like, it's not an addiction. It's just more so like, this is just the lifestyle. It's a very fine line between like heavy drinker and, yeah. and, and addicted. But now, after like reading certain self-help books and, and really just wanting once again to like see progress and get disciplined, I was like, nah, man, I got to. I got to cut all this back. So I stopped smoking weed. And yeah, I mean, now I, I go from, I went from drinking four times a week to maybe 10, 11 times a year, you know, mm. which is a massive, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. like anyone who knows like drinking four times a week to 10 a year, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. Did any hit songs come out of that acid week? <laughs> <That's> um, <question. laughs> I think, you no, know, maybe, I don't remember, but I think, Somebody in the Beatles, I think it was either John Lennon or Paul McCartney, said, like, acid is one of those things where, like, you do it and then report back with the information. It's not one of those things where you can make music on it. I never felt like I could make yeah, music like on Dad. acid. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you can make music on acid, <clears throat> that's next level. I don't know how you can do that. Yeah, because it'd be funny to look at your catalog and be like, which I made. I mean, I made songs about acid. They were not hits, though. They were they awful. They were hits? No. Like, just... <laughs> 
full like there's a song I have called Lucy and I shot a video for it. it wasn't as good if you as look you at the effects of the video, the whole shit is about acid. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, what Yeah, what, that that top one right there. Look you, I mean, look at this offer it. <laughs> <laughs> what what year is that? That's like twenty fourteen. Yeah, nine years ago. And how many views does that video have? Fucking what, ten? hundred six thousand. Oh, Five hundred and eight thousand. There you go. When, oh, when, when okay. uh, so, so that's your YouTube channel. That Di- was uh, me and Boogus's YouTube channel. Yeah, Diamond.com. Yeah, and Diamond is the name of your record label. Correct. Do it every day, music or nothing. Boogus came up with that name when we were like 17, and it just felt so authentic because we were just in there every day. What song has like the most downloads that you have? Probably Losing Control. How many would that have? It, I mean, Losing Control is eight times platinum now. I'm insane. So that's like eight million records sold. I, I, want, I want to talk about all the, all the business <laughs> stuff, but real, real quick, like what, what is your uh, physical fitness, like? Uh... Yeah. So my brother is a certified like trainer and nutritionist. So I lucked up with that, um, and he was not always on it, but he's been on that for like I don't know eight nine years, and so I was always like kind of around it and aware, but I was just like. A sack of shit, you know. And I was always one of those kids who, like, I could eat whatever, drink whatever, and I would never gain weight. But you start getting yeah. older, and you're like, I'm kind of looking a little chubby here. Yeah. Like, what's that, happening? I thought I was, was supposed to be able to eat Dude, anything. I... And so now I work out every day with him, and he cooks the meals. Like, it's all macroed out. Like, I track the food. I've been doing that for. I have an app on my phone. I think it's like 760 days in a row. Wow, dude, I'd love to to check out the app, man. I yeah. I, I just got crazy. called my macros. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just plug in like you know, the food, how much protein, fat, carbs, track it. Wow, yeah. dude, I I just got crazy, crazy with my food. Like we we were mm-hmm. on this cruise, this uh, impractical jokers cruise, mm-hmm. and uh, we were just like leaning into it. Like yeah, the cruise ships buffet. You're supposed to eat the whole time. We just made yeah, like a of like, like it was <laughs> we made. That was the funny comedy of the video is just yeah. how much we were stuffing our face yeah. with food. <laughs> and and at, at the end of it, I was I was like, okay, that was my that was my rock bottom, you know. Oh, so now yeah. like now like I don't want to like look see myself on camera and just think, dude, I look like shit. I don't yeah. want to, you know. Like I I know because I look, I can see on camera I look like shit. I know that means I'm not healthy. Like right. what, like I'm fat. Like oh, what, man. like I had several food rock bottoms. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm, I've never been in like Iowa like at 2 a.m. on tour, and the only yeah. shit open is like a Burger King, mm-hmm. and I'm like hammered. Go in there and get like two doubles, the chicken nuggets, fries, stuff yeah. my face. And I remember going to the back of the bus, back to the bed, and just laying down, face down. I'm just like, I am fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> like I have no, I have no business being. Yeah. Here. But um, you know what? The other thing that food did for me, and speaking of Napoleon Hill, is I read Outwitting the Devil, and he talks about, you know, mastering the three appetites and like. It's, you know, your actual appetite, your nutritional appetite, your uh, sexual appetite, and your appetite to express loosely formed opinions. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, if I want to clean up this discipline shit, if I want to get my shit together, starting with food is the easiest for me because that's really the thing I can really control. You know, thoughts is tough. Like, yeah, like everything else is tough, but... Yeah. Food, I can I can control that. One. Outwitting the I gotta get on this Napoleon Hill deal. Oh, I listened to that audio book back. The in audio book is cool. incredible. The devil yeah. talking to him. Yeah. Wow, dude. I, let, let me finish Proof of Heaven. And uh, yeah, this and, shit's fucking incredible. I mean, it's Napoleon Hill is the uh, the Think and Grow Rich is the number one self help bu- book. Yeah, he's of like the godfather time, of self help. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's where you you have Tony Robbins, you have uh, anybody that came along. They all watched. They all read Think and Grow Rich. Yep. Yeah. Even I, like my the first self help book I wrote was like largely inspired by. You wrote one? Oh yeah. What's that called? It's all in your head. I just finished the second one too. It's coming. Wow. Out. Dude. How long does it take you to write a, a book like that? Not that long. A couple weeks. A couple weeks. And that that's when you're on acid. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it did. Uh, it did pretty well. It was a bestseller on a lot of bestseller lists and sold like. 300,000 copies or something. Wow, like, dude, that's really that's good sick. for a book, man. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And, like, some like this, kind of back to what you were saying about being immortalized almost. It's yeah. like, to me, this is maybe the coolest shit I've ever done is because you I did the audio book 
too. Yeah. And I'm like, man, how cool is it that forever people will be able to just press play on my belief system and hear me say, yeah. I think it's so tight. I did a That's book. Really cool. uh, I did a book of memoir. Came out in 2011, Fuck and yeah. then uh, 2022, um, I did some sort of a self help book. Yeah, kind of. Uh, like you just, have a lot of game to give, though. You could definitely do one. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. it's a hard kick in the nuts. What I've learned. That's fire. <laughs> yeah, what I've learned from a lifetime of terrible decisions. That's awesome. And that's Scott's foot kicking me in the nuts. <laughs> I'd like to. Have, I'd like to consider that my retirement nut shot, but I think there have already. Have there been, been more? more? I think there have been more. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I feel like we've gone way too deep without. I should have brought this up right when you mentioned your hair, but but you oh. got the the hair product. The hair is that, is that new? Yeah, it is new, but we've been developing it for like three, four years. Okay. I kind of like when I did the book, I was like, man, I hardly read, and I was able to sell a book. So I'm like, my hair is with me at all times. Like, mm-hmm. I can definitely sell hair, nah. you know? So wow. I was just like, <laughs> kind of one of those just crazy why not ideas. Like, and what's the name of that? Palermo. Palermo. Yeah. Is, I've been to Palermo in Sicily. Is that yeah. because you're Sicilian? So on my dad's side, yeah, his side of the family, uh, he has relatives in Palermo. Palermo, Palermo. coming 2024. Look at that. Right. Look at those locks, man. <laughs> that <was beautiful. laughs> hey, is, so are you in Sic- That's Sicilian? in Palermo right there. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So, so um, coming 2024, so it's not out yet. No, not out yet. We're just like getting people signed up and getting them. Pre orders and stuff. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. right. So go to what's the <laughs> website? PalermoHairCare.com. PalermoHairCare.com. P A L E R M O. Really, it was just a good excuse to go to Palermo. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, and you're also promoting your new tour. Yes. So the tour, we're going to announce it in a week, week and a half, something like okay. that. North I American that, tour. I think this that will have happened before this comes out. When does this come out? Not not even sure, but, but, but here's the thing is that yeah. we, we try to bounce around a bit. Yeah. And we just put up Jelly Roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, love jelly I feel roll. like we I feel like we want to uh Yeah, let it breathe. Kind, a kind, little. kind of uh hit him with a you know, the the more we can bounce around and sure. and, and, and so they never know it's coming. Yeah, I like but, that. But you tell us when you want it out. And uh we're committed to the next episode. Yeah. Is uh because I'm a, a huge UFC fan. Fuck yeah, me too. So what are you doing? Uh, we we we're, we're, we get half hour with Sean O'Malley. Half oh, hour. Oh, that's with my Chito. boy. So, are you going to Miami? Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's why we're here. Is we're on oh, the way to so Miami. So I'm going to my. I'm doing the. Um, uh, what's it called? I'm performing at his after party. Ah, uh, yeah. sugar. Yeah, that's Sad. my boy. Like, really? Yeah, we've known Dude. each other for years. Are you yeah. gonna be at two ninety nine? Hell yeah. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, Dude, that's, fuck that, yeah. That, that's why. <laughs> that's why we left. I Tennessee. will be drinking alcohol that night. <laughs> yeah. That's literally why we left Tennessee. Nice. And we're in Atlanta now. It's because we're on the You're way to Miami. You're headed to Miami. Yeah. Dude. You're gonna get to Miami early. How sick that we we get to talk to Vanilla Ice. That's awesome. I, I hope that I'm so stoked that better not fall through. Damn it, Rob. Damn it. <laughs> Start spamming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh. And we got Birdman, too. Yeah. We got Real. Birdman. Yeah. Birdman? Like, yeah. Cash, cash Money Birdman. Money. Cash, cash Money Birdman. Money Birdman. Fuck Birdman. yeah, man. Yeah. I, I met him once and he was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude. We, we oh, he's not going to disappoint. I, no, dude, I, met, I met Birdman in 2004. Yeah. 20 years, dude. Wow. Shit. And we got in the studio. <laughs> You got in the studio. We got Bir- the, we got what the did studio you do? With Birdman, we, 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 Chris Pontius and yeah. me and the Shark Man Manny Puig. Okay. We, we, we recorded a track called "From the Desert to the Swamp." <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sober. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you were with the Birdman. In yeah, the Birdman, That's awesome. Birdman did the the hype man intro to us. Fuck you. Yeah. Where is that song? Can we pull it up? I don't know, dude. No, but. Oh my God! We got like unreleased. Uh, I, unreleased. I will. Yeah. I will. Exclusive. Dude, dude, Manny rapping was the funniest thing that has ever happened. That kind of planted the seed for me to want to rap. Yeah, yeah. And dude, I even tried tried rapping for a minute. I briefly there. remember that. Yeah. Dude, you're the only podcast guest that I've, I've mentioned that to that has any idea that I was trying yeah. to rap. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was such a 
dark chapter in my life. It's just because. <laughs> what a follow up. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the just where I was at. That was yeah. like at the pinnacle of my problem with drugs now. Got it. Yeah. And so that like it kind of mirrored like how bad I got. And that was like oh four, oh five, oh seven. Yeah. Was, Did you was, have downloaded music or was it all like album sales or? I mean, I don't know what I don't know what, what happened. I know it was on my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't even know like these songs that like, he listens to. Yeah, you got one download. Okay. <laughs> it's on my iPod. It's, it's like it's, it's, it's platinum. He has no idea. Like it sold a million records. Uh, but uh, but but all those you know the, the my rap chapter was like a really traumatizing thing for me. Like uh, I got sober in 2008, and I was just like ah. Oh. But it, it, it kind of, sort of like lingered and it bothered me like, oh, you know, like I should try to redeem it, you know? Mm. Like, so I had like on my, my list of YouTube videos to make, like rap redemption. I'm gonna get back in the studio yeah. and make a song I'm actually proud of. Yeah. And, and I wanted it to be a funny, like gangster rap song. Nice. So I made it uh, a song oh, about- Oh, you did it? Yeah, I did it, yeah. I did it with Violent J from um, ICP. Yeah, yeah he's and, got a tune uh, core. And called I love my girl, but and, and it's uh, it, this the song's about like how my girl like the one week a month mm. she just turns into a gnarly demon, mm. you know? It's yes. just like me bi- bi- like bitching about how gnarly my girl gets. Like uh, awesome, one, I'm one sure week she loved that. She, she did. Yeah. She's in. She's uh, on the track. Oh, she, oh, she loved awesome. it. But I, but then but then here I, and I I, I loved it. Mm. And then, dude, this is an, an admission here. I loved what we did. I think it's fun. I think it's funny. And, like, just, I put it on, and it was just, it was, the reception to it was so terrible online. I let that bum me out. And it, uh, it's, it's prevented me from, from going again. Well, it's, it's like, what are you doing it for? What's right. It, you know? It's the thing, dude. Yeah. I got I to gotta make more spaghetti and start throwing it at the wall. Yeah. Dude. You got exactly. a studio? I do. <laughs> what are you doing after this? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, we gotta get on the road, but uh, but uh, but yeah, I want to I want to keep making yeah. music, man. Like um, I'm glad I'm glad I spoke up about that because it's just I'm just quietly. You guys haven't heard me talk about music yeah. because I got I got my my butt hurt. Yeah. And dude, we made, well, we made it a sucks when you get fucking video. slapped in the face by the public. It's like it's tough. Yeah, yeah dude. You know? For sure, man. We both have that. Like uh, I saw, I saw where where uh, dude, is it really true that you got like a wave of hate online just because you wore a oh, T-shirt? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like that a, amongst other things. Yeah, it, like a, a the Xanax and the lean. Yeah, because it was just so rampant in rap at that time, and it was mm-hmm. you know, it, there was people like glorifying it, like making sure. merch out of it and shit, and it's just like this is fucking insane. And also, it came from me growing up around like white suburban kids who were doing Lean and Xanax, like, literally because they just thought that that shit was cool. Like, no real problems, just like, oh, because that shit's cool, because this rapper, whatever. And I just, like, yeah, I was just being a fucking obnoxious person, like, you're a fucking loser. All right, so Lean is Robitussin, and Jolly Ranchers, and Sprite? No, I don't know. No, no, it's it's is... liquid codeine. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's, it's, what, it's liquid heroin. It's, it's, it's basically like cough syrup, right? It's, it's, it is. It's cough syrup, syrup. and it's oh, liquid it's heroin. The yeah. Same shit. Yeah. Scissor is lean. Oh, so you're just it's, drinking hydrocodone? It's, it's, it's just codeine. And it's like, it's so fucking addictive and bad for you. And all these, it's like, people have died. You know what I mean? And so sure. I just felt like it was necessary to be on the right side of the fence. Like, this is fucking insane. And this needs to stop. The glorification of it needs to stop. And even like getting all the hate just kind of shows you where the culture was at. You know, it's like, so I'm the schmuck. Yeah. Like I'm I'm fucked up for calling it out. Not yeah. y'all who are pushing it. Me. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, the same thing with nitrous. I mean, nitrous mm. is right in that basket with wow. like it's cool, like all the rap. I, how many people reached out to me because nitrous was a big problem for me. Really? Nitrous really fucked me up. What is ni- just like inhaling? This, yeah, the it's nitrous oxide. Is that like a, doing a whip it? Yeah, exactly a whip it. Oh. Like, that's precisely what it is. And, and it got like uh, all this hype in, in, in rap. And, and I'm here to tell you that that, uh, you know, they call it hippie crack. You know, wow. it's literally like, it's literally not cool or good for you. Do you yeah. notice any long-term effects of nitrous or not really? I think my lungs are, are still messed up. Mm. Mm. You know what though, dude? Like, like uh, I, I uh, had my rock bottom with food. Since yeah. then, 
Like I, I've, I completely cut out flour and sugar. Nice. And uh, like processed every, sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Every I have one serving of fruit per day. Got it. And uh, other than that, it's just veggies in the air fryer. Yeah. And uh, protein on a fire pan. Just fish. I only eat fish. Nice. Like uh, and that's it. Yeah. And and I've, I'm three weeks into it. And and do how you do know, you feel? I I. I've, I feel like my appearance has improved like yeah, dramatically in just yeah. the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. And here's the big thing: when have there, when has there ever been a podcast where I'm not trying to go off mic and <coughs> clear my throat? Uh, and I clear my throat once this entire uh, time. Uh, yeah. By cutting you, out sugar, like now I don't have to clear my throat. You think all that's the time. from sugar? You know how self-conscious I am about all the throat clearing that I've done on this goddamn podcast. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think uh, you, you did it on Jelly Roll too. I didn't do it on Jelly Roll. You notice that you do it. Oh my God! Do I notice I do it? I'm so fucking embarrassed of wow. doing it. Wow! Like yeah, it's, yeah, you've it's something always done that. Super self-conscious, but I mm. don't do it. Like that because I've changed my diet. Like, wow. what, tell me what else? What else has changed? I changed my fucking no, it's diet. Probably that. And now, like, not one time on the last two podcasts am I. That's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. How much water a day? Do you know do how much help that helps my confidence? How much that? Yeah. Like, how I, much water are you drinking every day? And enough. Yeah, the other like a thing, I mean, I don't know. Like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not crazy like that. No. The other thing, I'm not drinking coffee all day long. I'm oh, one co- you're a coffee drinker? Yeah, one coffee in the morning, and then that's it. If I want to drink, drink something coffee, fun, I, I love never, it. I, I have to have it every morning. Yeah, yeah I can't do it. It just makes me fucking makes me nuts. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I did it just went once in the morning, and then that's and it. And then you're just coasting. Okay, Beautiful. I'm see what, what what else do we got? Man, I'm really enjoying talking to you. Same. Man. Same. I mean, we had this know. is a kick for me because like I grew up. I'm 31, so I grew up watching yeah. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I, I, I want to. I want to shout out a couple people. One, mm-hmm. uh, one being our uh, our shorts editor Josh, who gave me some feedback. He said, "Hey, you know what? You keep saying on the on the podcast like you, you'll be telling a story about yourself." And they say, "Oh no, but I got to stop myself from talking about myself." He's like. Let yourself talk about yourself. Yeah. Whatever this is your show. Do do what you want. You know. And I think I, I, with with you today, I've been pretty liberal about. about yeah. You know, I don't want to like retread and tell people the same things I've said a million times. That's a no no. But the, I I haven't. I like it because it's natural. It's like we we just met. You know what I mean? So yeah. like aside from the cameras, it's like. Tell me about yourself. It's like a pretty normal thing. Yeah. 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 And, and 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 everything that I was telling you, like is where I see we have parallels. Yeah, exactly. You know? The whole right. DIY, like, yeah. D, like become an entertainer, become uh, a, like a, a worldwide personality mm-hmm. on your own back with your own yeah. like hustle. Yeah. Like with no help from like anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's For sick, real. man. Like, Fuck like yeah. the, we, we put it together on our own because we wanted it that bad. Right. right. I think that if, if I have anything like inspirational to tell people, like, because they'll ask me, like, hey, I want to get into uh, the stand-up comedy, or I want to do it. You yeah. know? I always tell people, it doesn't matter what you want to do. Yeah. My advice is to start doing it. Yeah. Period. Straight up. With one caveat that that I, I recommend finding somebody who's further along than you are, mm. someone who has more experience, to make sure that when you start, you're not starting out the wrong way mm. because heaven forbid that you're so excited to get into something and start doing something but you're le- you're learning bad habits that you're now gonna have to unlearn uh, don't go in the wrong direction it's a great point find a mentor find yeah. somebody who can guide you so that oh, you get man. started in a way that you're developing good habits i wish i had a mentor early on man yeah Fuck. and it doesn't matter what you want yeah it only matters how bad you want it yeah agreed. like it's like and and i think that people's biggest problem most people's biggest problem is that they have not identified something about which they're truly passionate yeah yeah. life without passion i mean yeah well it's you know i don't know if you've read uh the subtle art of not giving a fuck Mm -hmm. but like he talks about how you know a lot of people they don't want the climb they want the summit you know so it's like oh i want a six pack but you don't want to go to the gym yeah. You don't want to actually do what's required to get a six pack. So then you don't really want a six pack. Right. Same thing. It's like you got to find the mountain that you're willing to climb, that you want to climb. 
Yeah. Like the climb of music was fun. The climb of your shit, I'm sure, yeah. was a fucking blast. You know? Oh, well, dear. Like for, for me, just people being impressed in, at a keg party in the living room when I, when I yeah. hijacked the VCR. Boom. Yeah, right. Stoked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like literally, that that uh, that got me stoked. Like, yeah. Um, the, the, it's, it's so nuts. Then there's like, uh, I, I say this a lot, and I, and I will absolutely repeat this, but. Um, the uh, the word enthusiasm mm -hmm. broken down to its uh, original roots in like Latin, Greek, whatever. Like there was, mm -hmm. is, uh, you have entheos, mm. which means with God. Oh wow! Enthusiasm. Wow. Means M like moving with God, essentially. Moving with God, yeah. Wow. With God, you're like doing God's work. Yeah, I love that. And then that's where I say, so when I'm shoving something in my butt, I'm doing God's work. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to spin it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's the thing. Like, Don't judge me, this is God's work. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like find that thing. And I think that, that that's like, um, that's what your dad recognized in you. Mm. You know, like, uh, like you're either, you're either uh, it's fear or love. Yeah. And, 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 and a mother, like, uh, a mother's job is to be in fear for for a baby. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, she's yeah. the she's the nurturer. Yeah. You know, like she's like like it's uh, and that so uh, not not to put down your mom saying that that she was like scared for you yeah, to yeah, pursue yeah. your dreams, but that's kind of her role to 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 nurture and to yeah. care for and to protect. Sure. So she's that that's where she came from. Yeah. And your dad recognized. That you're flowing with God, like yeah. he, he saw that that you had that you were on fire for that. Yeah, and you know what? He was always so musically inclined, and I think early on in his childhood, like he wanted to do music, because his his father taught me how to play guitar, so like he came from a musical family, mm. but his musical like aspirations were kind of just pushed to the side. Like his mom didn't really like get it like believe in it like that oh, or whatever wow, man. so i think like when he saw me doing music he was just gassed you know because he was the kind of dad like walk around singing at all yeah. times banging on the steering <laughs> wheel as the drum set you know what i mean like like scott's dad <laughs> that's awesome like tk yeah, yeah. Uh, whist I'm whistling yeah yeah dude my dad I, it, it's crazy my dad started whistling a lot <laughs> and like i started noticing with isaac then i called my brother and my sister and i was like have you guys noticed that like that and they like finished my sentence like yeah, dude, like dad's whistling a lot. And I was like, I Googled, why do old people, and it filled in the blank, whistle. <laughs> it's like a whole <laughs> like, community. Like, I clicked on it, and it's like, it says it's, it's, a, it's like a form of nostalgia for them or to oh. like, you know, they're getting older. So it's like remembering an old memory. But I'm yeah. like, I, 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 I think that my there's... dad never whistled before in his life up until like six months ago. Wow. I, I think that there's like, a, like a, a something, like a, there's a, a celebratory yeah Component, i mean know, look like, up the reasons because there's like celebrations or coping with stress happiness oh, wow. yeah uh, reminiscing mean, on an old memory yeah i, I think, associate that with happiness uh, yeah, old, old people just whistle right. um, <laughs> I mean, dude fuck okay so <laughs> so uh you know, can't wait till i start <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you just brought up tk tk's like 30 and he whistles i know more but that, than I, fucking... that, I, I think that when you tell, tell TK, TK with the whistling, come on, make me a break. Like, <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. like, and, and, and he says, like, what do you want? Like, I'm happy. This yeah, is me yeah. expressing joy. Yeah. I think that's there, there is an expression of joy piece to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's so true. Have you ever met somebody whistling who's sad? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just not happy. It doesn't it's go like, hand in hand. Yeah, like, don't, 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 you'd Scrooge me. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, with, uh, okay, so this, you, you, you make money off music when you own mm -hmm. your own publishing. And master, and master, mm -hmm. and you double your money when you're both the producer and the artist. Yeah, also true. So <laughs> yeah. you're like, so you're like, literally not even losing a drop. No, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of songs where I own a hundred percent of them, which is like absurd. Yeah, <laughs> I. So we saw something where you spent a million dollars out of your own pocket yeah. to do a song with Ed Sheeran. Yeah, on now, like the what marketing. Does, does, oh, it was just all over on the marketing. Yeah. How much does Ed get out of that? It's, it's a prop, profit share. Yeah, he's with that song is with 
when he was with the label because I think he's independent now. Yeah. So I forget his split oh, wow. on that song. Mm. Yeah, but it, that probably. Do you have to negotiate that with Ed before you do the song? Yeah, they figure out like what percentage mm -hmm. is yeah. there. I forget what it was. But you're that, not but talking I, with Ed like, okay, so. No, it's like my manager's. 20? Lawyers talk to each other. Yeah. Is, it is there a level at which it's not just what you plug into TuneCore? What do you mean? Like, uh, like when you. When you go into TuneCore, they'll ask you who the splits are. Yeah. TuneCore distributes all the music to Spotify and yeah, Apple yeah, Music yeah. and everything, yeah. right? So yeah. is it from like. The, oh, like can you get away with not putting in the splits? Well, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm asking like, uh, say like for, for YouTube, like yeah. it's, it's AdSense, mm -hmm. you know, so like AdSense revenue applies to the like Mr. Beast mm -hmm. as well as the smallest creator that, that even qualifies for AdSense. Yeah. So by the same like model that AdSense covers the entire spectrum of YouTube revenue, mm. does TuneCore cover the entire spectrum of oh, music I see what revenue? You're saying. Yeah, I mean, I I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but the way it works is it's if you're bringing more streams to Spotify, then when the money starts getting divvied up, you're getting a better rate. Ah, okay, higher yeah. CPM for, yeah. for uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah. I could be wrong, but yeah. But it's still in TuneCore. Yeah, if that's your distributor, yeah. Right. So, Cause so certain so distributors once, once like once you leave the label, if, like if you're with the label, yeah. then it's the labels to the tune right. Core. Exactly. Exactly. But once you leave the label, now you're on the the level playing field of TuneCore. Right. And some of these distributors like don't have the same rates that a major label gets. So like that's why TuneCore gets tier one rates, which is like the same that a major label gets. So a lot of people don't talk about like yeah. major labels get the best rates from Spotify and whatever. And if you go to like one of these other Distributors that's not a major label, you might be getting worse rates and you don't even know it. So, so wow. TuneCore is where it's at. I fuck with TuneCore. I've been with them since 2011. I don't get paid to say that. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's just what I've used and what I'm yeah. comfortable with, and it works. I made a shit ton of money with them. Um, the uh, is it the case that just people don't need fucking reps anymore? <laughs> like they labels reps, like yeah. I mean, God. I just, I, mean, do I don't know the, I don't know the, they're going to get so mad about this, but I mean, the reality is like, I, I personally don't know the purpose of an A&R in today's music scene. Previously, I think A&Rs would help like orchestrate the producers and collabs and the features like, oh, you should work with this producer, you should do this. I just feel like now everything is so like DM core. me. Yeah, yeah, like DM me and, so and then like, we'll, we'll agree on what we plug into TuneCore. Right. It's like <laughs> it's it's, fucking crazy, so like dude. I put out an album called Chomp Two and it was like it's a series I have, which is when I just collaborate with like fucking hip hop legends on the production side and the features. So like Chomp Two is like fourteen songs. It's DJ Premier, Jake One, Bink, fucking Ninth Wonder, all, like all these crazy producers, and then all these crazy features, Jay Electronica and Jada Kiss, and it's crazy how many people were involved with this. Yeah, there it is. I DM'd all of them. Mm -hmm. That's that was the A and R process. Sure. I DM them. I said, "Yo, are you down to rap? Are you, yo, can you, you send me beats?" Fifteen percent. Yeah, and it's like that's, but I feel like that's what most artists are doing. They're DMing the artists they want to work with. Yeah, and that's what it is. So I don't. I don't personally know the value of an A and R anymore because I feel like artists are A and Ring themselves, but who knows? So you've got booking agents for your tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have one uh, promoter that you work with? Is it like Live Nation? Like yeah, Live Nation does the bulk of like domestic stuff. So like this North American tour um, in the summer is Live Nation. Is and, and what's the name of the tour again coming up? It was You All Along tour. It was You All Along. Yeah. And that's just straight arenas. Yeah. Uh, the, we're doing ten that. shows, ten arenas. Okay. Yeah. Major cities. Yeah, pretty much. Is um uh, is you Minneapolis a major up? city? It's not out. Minneapolis. The tour's not yeah, Minneapolis. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If it's got a football team. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fair. Right. Yeah. Arena. Even that, though they like it's Minnesota Vikings, but their their yeah. stadium, I'm sure, is Minneapolis. The, yeah. the, the biggest show you've ever done is how many people? Twenty thousand Saudi Arabia. Probably like at my own show. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, Saudi or Hollywood Bowl was seventeen thousand. It's crazy. So, they're epic, man. Yeah, I'm. Uh, Tour is when you can really see like the real life impact. Mm -hmm. you sit on your phone all day and just look at fucking comments and numbers. You can't really tell like what's what. And then you go out and do a show and you see people 
chanting the words or like mm-hmm. coming up to you afterwards and thanking you. It's like, oh, this is, I got to get out of the fucking house. <laughs> like, what, what, what's on your writer for every show? Nothing crazy. Like fucking sparkling water and water. It used to be it. like bottles of tequila and fucking, you know, I had a bunch of people with me, so they would just add shit to the rider, like wings, pizza, fucking gummy bears, and it's so bland. Yeah, Steve's is coffee and sparkling water. I had a pot of coffee and sparkling yeah. water. And yeah. veggie, and like a veggie bowl. Yeah, like I have, oh, a, yeah, I have yeah, a veggie yeah, tray and like yeah, water. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I, I did, like being on tour, it's like, okay, enough of the fucking veggie Yeah, tray, enough like, of the <laughs> chips <laughs> and hummus. It's, it's, it's so, so much hummus. So tired of hummus. It's so much hummus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was doing one of my first shows ever, and it was in Seattle. It was like my first American tour, and I brought my cousin with me. And this is when we were both just like drinking heavy. And I'm like out on stage, and I turn around. And he's also on stage with his shirt around his neck. He's covered in like ranch or hummus because he had knocked over the veggie tray <laughs> and he's like covered in hummus. And I'm performing and he's handing out s- slips of paper with his number on it. To the, and he's just like hammered, just like handing out pieces of paper with his number on it covered in hummus. Jesus, dude. Wow. It was uh, insane. Anytime I think about hummus, I just think about that. <laughs> Dude, I'm inspired as hell by you, your story, the whole Thank deal, you, man. man. I, I dig it. And and uh, here we are. I feel like we've been, we've put an hour and a half in. Hour and a half. Beautiful. Yeah. That's uh, you know, yeah. that, that that's on the, the the long end for us, man. Nice. It flew by. It this, did. This absolutely fucking flew by. That was by. awesome, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm cool. super stoked. Let, let, let's uh, like throw some plugs at, at whatever you want. Like you got your Instagram. It's just Russ. Yeah. Yeah, at Russ, R U S S. At Russ. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all yours. The handles to TikTok. Twitter is, is Russ Diamond, R U S S D I E M O N. Okay. Um, yeah, Dad, tour have... coming out, book coming out, hair care coming out, music coming out. There it is. Sick. Yeah. Let's say that one more time. We got uh, tour coming out, tour coming out, book coming out, hair care coming out, and music coming out. There it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man. And, and and money's not gonna buy you happiness, but no, uh, no. being a good guy, doing the right thing. Yeah. And uh, showing up, integrity, yeah. discipline. Mm-hmm. Now think- what if somebody offered you a hundred million for your <laughs> No. But I will say money buys a bit of happiness now. Let's let's just be honest. Like there's I, certain things where like money can buy like a beach house made my mom happy. And I had to buy the beach house with money. But I think like there there's a certain part of your soul that is not going to be fulfilled by money the yeah. I, I went to a, a talk at the uh, art art center in pasadena and the guy who created the jaws poster mm. you know the infamous one where they draw yeah 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 up, and he said money doesn't buy you happiness but it helps lubricate you through life a little bit easier oh exactly and it's a like, problem yeah, that, you want taken care of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean For sure that's like oh the, the, you can't get into the club it's like really like, yeah. you know what I mean? like you're just walking right Fuck in. You. Yeah, I mean, there's there's something for me. I don't know. Like since uh, I have been spending my time in Tennessee, just on a ranch. Like, yeah. like uh, I'm jealous, man. That's like the dream. It's a little bit for like me. you can afford it. I know, but I'm like not ready to be out the game yet. All the way, Ooh. like I'm but, scared. Yeah, yeah. but the, the, my, I'm trying to figure it out where I create just as much content. Yeah, that I you know like I earn just as much money and yeah. Like, uh, but I'm just like, I wake up on. You You're know. surrounded by nature and animals. Yeah. It's incredible. I'm, I'm just really... so hardwired to get home ever since I had two dogs. So I couldn't imagine if I had like, yeah, fucking, you 70. know, 30 animal animals yeah. and just, I'd be like never leaving the house, you know? But damn, I'm really stoked, man. Um, once again, I think this, uh, pot, we, we should just go ahead and put this one out after, uh, Suge and, and Cheeto. Sure. Fuck yeah. Yeah, and I'll be stoked to see you uh, in Miami. Yeah, I'll too. see you all there. So, back, going back to before that, you know, we're like, got a book, and play the tour. Book, tour, music, <laughs> hair. Yeah. yeah. And, dude, it's epic, man. No, nah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank literally you. Literally, yeah. just been such awesome. a blast. Yeah, and this was fun. Yeah, Fuck yeah thank man. you. Sick. Thank you. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I said it before, I'll say it again. That was an epic conversation, man. Like, I didn't, I didn't know I was gonna love him so much. I didn't know I was gonna be so inspired, 
And like I said on the Sugar Sean podcast, like, man, like I said on the main channel, like, video, I really, really hope that this gets the audience it deserves. And you know I love you guys who stick around to the very end. I can't say it enough. Um, what, what, what interesting stuff can I share with you? You know what? I'll go ahead and tell you. I got a, a moving company here at my house. They're, they're packing it up. Um, I'm going to put my house on sale. Isn't that crazy? So, like, against, like, the clock... Why before the movers came in to like take stuff out like I'm making the finishing up the house tour video that I, I've been working on forever so fun like I kept the same outfit so like when I when I when I'm showing this one thing like uh you know Knoxville comes out of the bathroom hey what's up Knoxville you know like I'm showing this picture of Tony Hawk on the wall Tony Hawk comes out of the bedroom oh yeah what's up Tony like all this is like fun cool like little Easter egg stuff happens in this magical house tour video. And uh, finally I have a deadline on it because we're packing it up and like, uh, so yeah, I'd, I didn't think I was gonna share that with you guys, but hey man, I love you. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Yeah, dude.